Undoubtedly, the toughest work on tonight's program is Elementi of 1962. Here was evidence in his chamber music of revolution without barriers. We're privileged to witness Elementi here tonight as it's rarely performed. Unfortunately, it couldn't be fitted onto the CD as well. Elementi is the first of three works for different ensembles which go under the overall title Genesis. These two titles, Elementi and Genesis, are indicative of Goretzky's mood and intentions at the start of the 1960s after the wild extravagance of Scontri. Having had his fling with the serial world of Boulez and others, he decided to look inwards, go back to basics, back to the essentials. His sketches for Elementi, which I had the great honor to see in the mid-1990s, include notes on the meaning of the word element, such as a constituent part of a complex whole, or beginnings, principles of knowledge, and even fire, water, earth, air. On the musical front, Goretzky noted the significance of rhythm and movement, dynamics, strength, and intensity, as well as timbre and coloring. Towards the end, he wrote out a three-word motto in big capital letters, energy, movement, life. Another feature of Elementi is the relationship between its technical means and its expressive idiom. One cannot divine from its sound world that a rigorous technical apparatus underpins its heightened expressivity, which sounds improvised but isn't. The inner scaffolding, however, was but the starting point for Goretzky, and only at the very end would an analyst find clues to the serial processes at work. This relationship between technical rigor and the deliberate expressive spoiling of its functional beauty is crucial for Goretzky. As he commented in an interview at the time, because Elementi begins the whole cycle, what is happening in the work should be regarded as the initial movement of something like nuclei, individual atoms. The foundation of the construction of the entire piece is the set of intervals of the prime and retrograde series. As for the sound phenomena, their sequence, duration, dynamics, these I regulate purely by ear. As soon as I draw formal consequences from a series, I no longer stick to the initial sequence of sounds in the series. I choose what I consider most appropriate at a given moment. What can you expect from Alimenti? Well, first, you may be astonished that the instruments are widely spread, spatially, in the shape, naturally enough, of a triangle. Such spatial interests were at their height at this time in Poland and elsewhere. Stockhausen in Germany and Carter in America also used it. For Goretzky, it was another opportunity to flat convention. It also means, of course, that the sound travels more than usual. The score recommends that the players should be placed as follows, with a violin at the back center of the stage, six to eight meters from the viola on front stage right, and cello on front stage left, with a distance between them of 10 to 12 meters. Well, we couldn't quite manage this precise arrangement tonight, so you will find yourselves right in the middle of the action. One player, second player, third player, conductor. And Goretzky recommends a conductor in the score. The sound world of this 12-minute piece is uncompromisingly gritty. Clear notes are few and far between. Goretzky really is digging deep. He's almost like a painter who, having finished a picture, rudely, roughly, and violently scrapes it down to its essential shapes and colors. Sections follow sections in which the expression of the moment is paramount. Ideas are flung from instrument to instrument. In fact, Goretzky deliberately does not call Elementi a trio, but a work for three strings. There is a clear halfway point where the texture settles temporarily on quiet trills. Some moments later, each instrument detunes so that what appear as clearly pitched perfect fifths in the score are nothing of the sort. Elementi concludes with the violin's lowest note, a long, open string, but by now notional G natural. <laughs> 